Let's focus a little bit more on, on Raheem Sterling. Mm. Um, when you look at what they're getting, this 27-year-old Raheem Sterling, we've talked about it so many times already. He's, he's basically coming into his prime. That's what we're expecting from him. And we heard some voices there. Leanne Sanderson, Marcus Rashford, Trevor Sinclair, Gabby Agbonhor, Adebayo Akinfema, all of them speaking so glowingly of Raheem Sterling. Are you still surprised that City have sold him? I say still surprised. I don't, no, Are you I'm not, surprised, I should ask? I thought it was going to happen last year. Okay. I thought that he would probably look like the so guy you, that you could So you felt be. his time was coming to an end at City? Well, look, look he's done brilliantly. His three years, three years at Liverpool was excellent, and he was about one in four and a half games goal. You know, he'd get a game every one in, one in four and a half. So decent ratio for a wide, wide player. Mm. And then seven years at City, and he's basically just shy of doing one in two. Which is the seven years, but and he's been a he scares people. I've always said that that he always scares fullbacks. He wants to commit, and even when Raheem's having a difficult game and not playing at his, you know, his brilliant best, he keeps going. He keeps trying. He keeps trying to want. He always wants the ball. He always wants to keep testing the defender that's in front of him. He's got the same ratio with England. He's got one in two. You know, he's got played just shy of eighty games and got nineteen goals. You know, that's a. Really good ratio of goals per game. Um, I, I think it's sometimes certain stages of players' careers is you you just move on, and I think that rotation system at City, where honestly, Nat, from Bernardo Silva to Mares to Jack Grealish to Phil Foden, Raheem Sterling, you know, there's five there for sort of two, maybe three spots in depending what style Pep wanted to set his team up. I think at Chelsea, he'll play a lot of football week in, week out. And that's what he wants. It's really interesting because Thomas Tuchel's been asked about it uh, with uh, Chelsea out in America on their pre-season tour. And he says, Sterling was our number one. That's who we were going for this summer. Uh, He says, I gave his name to Todd straight away. Todd Bowley, who is the club's uh, co-owner, I think chairman as well, and also the interim sporting director. Uh, He said this, and you mentioned about he's difficult to play against. This is what Thomas Tuchel had to say. Every time we played against him, Raheem Sterling, he is horrible to play against. Horrible, he says. Uh, The main point is his intensity and the amount of repetition of intensity that he delivers this is simply outstanding over the last years it's not about his goal scoring in the last season it's not about his performance against us he says once you dig deeper into his data uh, it is about his intensity his high high speed intensity which is outstanding yeah I I agree I said it at the very start said Stone is a great signing for Chelsea really think it's a necessary one Um, and it gives him a new fresh challenge and I've always enjoyed and I remember the 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 press conference that Pep Guardiola did when there was rumours that Sterling was going out the door, this is a few years back, and he said absolutely no chance Mm. at that particular time. Mm. Now, obviously, football moves on this summer. Pep's probably thinking, well, he's one year and he's not prepared to commit to a new contract. You know, interestingly, Mahrez signed a new three-year deal, was it yesterday? You know, so he signed on to stay at the club a bit longer. And Sterling indicated, I'm sure, that he felt his time has ended. And he put a great message out to the Man City fans about how well they treated him, the brilliant time, the education he had at the football club, and he felt he developed and improved far more as a player. And now he's ready for a new challenge. And I think it's simple as that with this particular transfer, and it suits both parties. Um, I, I'm looking forward to see Raheem in a Chelsea shirt because I do really believe it'll be pivotal to how Chelsea do this year. Mm. So bringing in a wide man like they have, an influential wide man, they still have the question mark over on number nine and whether or not they'll actually bring in somebody. Thomas Tuchel again spoke about Romelu Lukaku and the fact that he has now left the club on loan. And he actually said, you know, I was always clear that if he stays, we will do everything to put him in a better place, to put him in better shape, to improve my style, he said, of coaching, our style of playing even, to make it a better fit Mm. for Romelu Lukaku. But it was Romelu who made it clear he wants to leave and the owners took that decision straight away. Yeah, um, well, uh, now if you go back to his time at Manchester United when he got left out of the, the team, mm. he got dil- disillusioned very quickly and quickly left the club. And it's the same sort of thing at Chelsea. Okay, still a loan deal. But it feels like he's making a decision. If it's not right, it's not right, I'm off. 
That's how it feels from the outside as you were reading that to me. Yeah, well, as Thomas Tuchel went on to say, I'm not happy that we couldn't bring more out of him. Um, but the owners made their choice and, and had my blessing ultimately. What I was going to ask you, as we mentioned, two signings now this summer, um, this new ownership with Todd Bowley at the helm, uh, at the helm even, um, he's the interim sporting director. Yeah. Is that a little bit odd to have an owner who's also very influential in who you're bringing in? No, I I was used to having some crazy owners that actually felt they were the coach, the manager and everybody at the football club. <laughs> Maybe, I don't know Tom Poley, obviously. Um, but but he, he's not someone you'd, that strikes you as a football man, if you well, know no, he's from not, his but past. Maybe that's the next person in along the line somewhere because obviously Czech's leaving, um, a number, yes. number of other staff have. Um, so, yeah, it is strange, but there are owners, Nat, that I've, honestly, I've had where... They really do want to do everything, nearly from picking the team to, you know, transfers and many other things at the football club. I, I, the interesting thing is me is going to be, what does he do with Carl Havertz? Because mm. Havertz done okay last year, um, room for improvement. If he progresses again, because by the end of the season he was looking decent, is he going to be the guy that fits that role of, where Lukaku play because they don't need really a traditional number nine Chelsea in the in the way they play. So if if Havertz kicks on, I think it could be a really good year again for Chelsea. You know, I think they can do well, but it, I don't. I'm not. I don't think that's a guarantee. I don't feel really sure about whether that will work. I don't see Timo Werner working for Chelsea. I think he'll be a bit part player uh, for them this year. Again, this is an uh, an interview, I should say, with Tom Roddy in The Times where I'm pulling out all these quotes. It's really fascinating to read because it seems as though Thomas Tuchel's just been really honest uh, and revealing about it all. He says, you know, there is a, there is a list of players mm. that we'd like or certainly areas we need to, to strengthen. Um, but it's not it's not a case of saying, if you don't bring me these players, I'm going to leave. But he says there's an open dialogue with, with uh, Todd Bowley. They talk every day. And... Going back on to him being the interim sporting director and, and perhaps not having any kind of footballing background, could that actually work in Thomas Tuchel's favour in that maybe he's a very good businessman, hence these deals that we're now seeing coming to fruition for Chelsea, that to, it will work in Tuchel's favour because Thomas Tuchel can go to him and go, I want this player, I want that player, get it done. And he doesn't have to necessarily think, Todd Bowley, about being a sporting director and what's best for the club in terms of I've done my research on these players. He can just go in going, this is what my manager wants. I'm a businessman. I can make it work. Well, I'm pretty sure as much as Jurgen Klopp at Liverpool does a lot with the recruitment team and they, they identify players, they still want their say of who actually comes in. Yeah. Um, and I think Thomas Tuchel's probably not had that as much as he'd like. He certainly didn't get it at PSG. Mm. Um, and I think it was probably mixed at Chelsea. The fact that he's wanted Raheem as his number one target and Tom Bowley's gone, yep, we'll get you that one, that would make the, the relationship far more healthy, Yeah, in my mind. Yeah. You know, so Alex Ferguson was very much the man of everything at Manchester United, but he knew what he wanted and nine times out of ten, the people above him trusted him and believed in him. It's as though maybe Thomas Tuchel's suddenly been given more authority than he's had in previous years. Well, PSG, he had really zero. Mm. Uh, okay, he, had the, he coached the team, but it wasn't, you know, it was all about you have to play certain players. Neymar being the one that I would always, it'd always be the standout for me because that come at a price for him because I, I think they should have um, gone further in the Champions League because there was huge mistakes made along the way. So two signings in, do you expect them to do more? And what do you expect now with these two in at Chelsea? What more can they achieve this coming season? Well, I, I do think that a centre forward would be a priority at Chelsea. Um, who that would be, I really have no idea because it's there's a lot a of the big ones anymore. have gone. Yeah. yeah, a lot of the big ones have gone. Do Chelsea go down that road in the age? I'm not so sure. Um, you never know, is there a surprise sort of gem in the, the sort of the, the young lads coming through that might make a bit of a bit of a, a play to get into the first team but I don't see it being Timo Werner I, mm. I think Havertz is the is the one like well, I said it, earlier it, the season ended with him in that position yeah. didn't it um, still needs to improve again he needs to for really for Chelsea to be closer to Liverpool and and City but and is that what where Spurs you have, have the done. benefit maybe of a of the uh, of a Raheem Sterling who you would know will love the pace of Sterling the getting in behind is he the kind of person that might bring out more of Havertz? Yes, I, I think 
I mean, I like Havertz. I think he's, you know, he's a very young man when he comes to Chelsea. Mm. And he felt raw and not quite ready. And that's, you know, what was he, 21 when he turned up? You know, you feel, God, that's a huge challenge to lead the line. But look, there's a... There's some good things happening at Chelsea. I said they'll get decent players in and they have. Just lastly, a player I want to ask you about who is not related to any new signings but might be looked upon as a, a new player because we've not seen him for Chelsea, Conor Gallagher. Yes. Yeah. What are you thinking about him this coming season? Do you think he's got a big part to play for Chelsea or does he have to go out on loan? It seems he's very much in at Chelsea now. He's on the pre-season tour. There doesn't seem to be much talk of him going out mm. this season on loan. So can he have a... a part to play this season? Well, Chelsea would have watched him all season. You know, they always have a club representative watching them, see how he's doing, watching their lone e players. Um, and they can't be... Yeah, It has to be, Thomas Tuchel said, get him, we need him here this year. Yeah. He's playing for us. But the fact that he's in the squad, that that's a big plus for Conor Gallagher. Now, there isn't many goal-scoring midfielders who can break into positions and get goals and be a really good finisher. I think Chelsea, they need that. They need that Frank Lampard type. They really, because he's brilliant at doing that. He loves to get beyond the midfield and attacking positions behind uh, centre halves, and ending up being inside the eighteen-yard box. And he'll he'll be a big firm favourite with Chelsea fans. He just needs the games and get in front of a guy who's got forty, fifty caps, international caps at Chelsea is a tricky one. I'm not so sure the Jorginho role will be there this year. I think Kovacic, Kovacic could do that role. And that might allow a break in midfielder. Yeah, yeah, Kante, yeah. I'm not sure what's happening with Kante and Gola Kante as well. Mm. I'd love to see Gallagher playing, for just to see what he can do. Because every it's loan tripping, spell yeah. he's had, it's always seemed to be a success. And we've spoken about him a number of seasons. He'll we? get goals. I've seen him get goals for Charlton. Obviously, he did it at West Brom and he's done it at Palace. Yeah. Oh, Every time he's got a number of goals.